A couple of days ago, I shared these two images to Instagram and in less than 48 hours, I've received more comments, likes and feedback than I would typically expect to receive. In this week's video, I wanna show you how I edited both of those images. I've also got some great tips to share as usual, so I really hope you're gonna stick around and enjoy the video. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. This video is kindly sponsored by Luminar Neo. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I share regular photography tutorials, all designed to help you get more for your digital camera so you can take better photos. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Now, I like to think of myself as a photographer who strives really hard to get the best results I can in camera. Now, that means that some of my images may not need editing, but if I'm Totally honest with you guys, most images are edited to some degree. After all, we live in the digital age, so we have these tools available that can take our images to the next level. So if you're keen to improve your images and would like to learn more about editing and post-production, then I really hope you're gonna stick around for the next few minutes because I wanna show you what Luminar Neo has to offer. Okay, so let's get into it. I wanna start with a quick tour around the screen. I wanna show you how everything is laid out and how easy it is to get started. So here we are in Luminar Neo. As you can see, I've already imported a selection of images into the program. To import images is easy. All you need to do is click on Add Photo, select an image from your folder and click Add. Simple as that. Now what I'm gonna do is just give you a very quick introduction here. So I'm gonna choose an image. I'm gonna go for this image of a car. This is a raw image. Over to the right, you can see clearly it's a raw image. And this was shot on a Nikon ZFC. Uh, here, all the uh, lens details, all the camera settings that we use when I took the image, all very useful information. Anyway, to edit the image, I'm gonna click on edit. Now this opens a full size image, plus now we have all the tools running down the right hand side of the screen. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not gonna run through all of these tours. I'm just gonna show you a couple. There are some more coming up later in the video. Um, I'm gonna go straight to develop. Now, one of the things I think this image lacks, it is a little bit dark, particularly in the bottom half of the image. So I'm gonna click on the develop tool. Um, and as you can see, there's a drop down menu, which will be very familiar if you've ever used editing software like Lightroom, for example. Now, what you can do is adjust the exposure, but this is a global adjustment. So adjusting the exposure adjusts the exposure for the whole image, as does reducing the exposure. Double click to reset any of the sliders at any time. Now, what is more useful is being able to adjust the highlights and the shadows because I don't actually want to make the sky any brighter. I just want to boost um, the light at the bottom half of the image. So I'm going to go to shadows and I'm going to increase the shadows. And as you can see, just in a few seconds, that's made a big difference to this image. Now, I can also add some contrast if I wish. And I can reduce the contrast, of course. I'm just gonna push the contrast up a little bit. And just to check my progress, I'm gonna click on the eye icon just to see my before and my after. Now I'm done with the develop for now. Now what if I've decided I don't want a color image, I want a black and white image. All I've gotta do is click on black and white. Again, there's a drop down menu. So with just one button press, we now have a black and white image. Now, if you change your mind, all you've got to do is click on the reset tool and it just resets. Very, very simple indeed. So again, there are heaps and heaps of things you can do. The best way to learn this program is literally to get stuck in, have a play around and see how each individual tool affects your image. Remembering that you can go back and reset at any time. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that we're gonna be editing two images. Let's start with this one. This is a great shot of my mate's classic 1960s Volkswagen Combi. So here's the original Volkswagen Combi shot taken at sunset. And of course, this image has the original sky. And as you can see, there is nothing going on in the sky. There's not a cloud in the sky, which is quite typical of Brisbane. I love a blue sky, but I really want some interest up here. So I'm gonna show you how to use the sky AI feature. Now, before that, I'm actually gonna use the erase feature because there are some elements to this image that I wanna get rid of. You may not have noticed it, but my camera bag is here under the tree. I'm also gonna get rid of the these fence posts as well. 
Now this tool is really easy to use. Click on Erase, select the size of the tool or the brush, and then all you've got to do is brush over what you want to remove, click Erase, and it's done. It's that simple. Now to speed things up, I'm going to select all the fence posts as well as my camera bag because no one needs to see that. I'm going to click on Erase and as you can see, very quickly they are gone. There's also a couple of piles of dirt here. I just want to get rid of, they just kind of annoy me a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of those as well. And that is done. Let's have a quick look. I can go to the before and the after and you can see just how easy it is to use. Next, of course, I want to add some sky and some drama and some interest to this image. So I'm going to go over to Sky AI, select Sky Selection. And as you can see, already supplied with the program, there's a whole heap of skies to choose from. You can get more skies, plus a nice feature is you can add your own skies as well. So you can actually take photos of amazing skies and you can save them to the program to use on a later date. Now I'm going to go back up to the top here and select sky number one. Um, and as you can see, very, very quickly, the sky gets dropped into the image. Um, no masking required. It's all automated using the AI. And this particular sky clearly doesn't work. It's not the right time of day. I don't, it just doesn't work. So let's try another one. Now, whilst this might be a slight improvement, I still think it's the wrong time of day. So I'm going to scroll down and towards the bottom here, there's a selection of sunset skies. Now let's try this one. Now this I think is an amazing sky, but it's too dark. It's too, there's just too much drama going on. So let's try another one. This is better and look to save some time. I'm going to go straight to this one because this is a sky that I think perfectly suits this image. Now you'll notice that the sun is here, but in the original image, the sun was here. So what I'm going to do is move the sky and you can do this quite easily by going to adjustments and using the sliders, you can easily move the sky into position. So I want the sky to be about, I want the sun to be about there. Just move it up a, a touch. Yep. And after a little bit of adjustment, I think that looks pretty neat. Now, actually, there's one more thing I want to do. I just want to make the uh, Volkswagen Combi bus here just a little bit brighter. So I'm going to go over to Develop. I'm going to go to Mask In, Mask AI, and you'll see that the software is doing its job. It's looking for um, different components of the image. For example, Sky, Flora. It's going to pick up the tree, and I'm going to choose Transport, which, of course, is the bus. Now you'll see the mask shown in red isn't absolutely perfect, but that's not a problem. We can refine this by going to Mask AI, choosing Brush and Erase. I'm going to change the size of the brush. I'm going to go over here and just brush away the little bit of the mask that we don't want. Okay, just I don't want to brighten the tires too much. So I'm just going to remove a little bit here as well. Okay, that's really cool. And now what I can do is make adjustments that are based solely on where the mask is. So I go over to the develop module. I adjust the exposure to make the bus brighter. Um, I adjust the shadows. You know, these are subtle little changes. If we see the before and after, you can see that it makes quite a big difference. And there you go. I think I'm done. Now the sky replacement tool also has another cool feature. I'm going to need to select another image to show you this. I'm selecting an image that has some water because what you'll see is if I add a sky to this image, it's actually going to be reflected back in the water. So as you can see, I've added this really dramatic and amazing sunrise sky. You can actually see this reflected in the water surface. Now what's really cool is you can also adjust the reflection. You can either reduce or increase the reflection intensity. And this of course adds that extra level of realism to the image. Now I appreciate that some people watching might think that changing the sky on an image is a step too far. And to be honest, it's not something that I would typically do. But of course in this video, I wanna show you just what Luminar Neo is capable of doing. And photography like any art form is subjective. So what may work for one person may not necessarily work for the next person. But I know out of these two images, which one I prefer. I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments down below. Now Luminar Neo is packed with lots of really cool features and it's gonna be impossible to show them all in this video. So let me show you some of my personal favorites. 
Okay, so let's start by selecting a portrait image. Now this is an image of our model Georgia. It's a bit of an outtake actually. This this is taken in the car park outside the studio, but it's actually the perfect image to demonstrate a feature called portrait bokeh. So over to the right, this is our tours column. Down the bottom, there's some portrait options, and I'm gonna select portrait bokeh, which is gonna allow us to blur the background. Now I'm gonna choose a fairly low amount just to begin with, and just after a few seconds, seconds you will see the background blurs. Now this is a feature that is often found in many smartphones but it's a feature that you have to apply actually when taking the image rather than after and of course the more we increase the amount the more background blur we get and again let's just have a quick look at the before and after. Now the correct photography technique for creating this lovely blurry background look and this beautiful bokeh is usually to use a prime lens, but not everybody can afford a prime lens. So I think this bokeh feature found in Luminon Neo is actually pretty neat. Okay, let's take a look at another feature. Now what I want to show you is a really handy tool called the dust removal tool. Now let me select this image which has a very clear sky. Now if I enlarge this image you are going to see some nasty blotches in the sky. Now this is dust on the camera sensor. Now to get rid of this all I've got to do is select the erase tool and then click on the button that says remove dust spots. And after just a few seconds, all the dust spots are removed. And trust me, this can be a big time saver. Now I would like to say a big thank you to the team over at Skyland for supporting my channel, sponsoring this week's video, and of course giving me the opportunity to show you just what Luminar Neo can do. If you want to try it for yourself, check out the link. You'll find it in the description below this video. So I really hope you've enjoyed this week's video and if you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up because it does make a difference. It helps the videos get noticed and that means a lot to me. Please consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on future videos and that's about it. Thanks once again to Skylum. Thanks to you for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.